So where'd you get this shirt? It's a singing <laughs> The national treasure yes. since 1867. Mm -hmm. All right, turn around. Let's get this picture. All right. All right. <laughs> Pull it in tight. Lean it in for me. Now, this says it all. The national treasure since yes. 1867. Oh, yes. We are not confused yes. here, Morgan. And you can see that our students are not confused. Yes. They know a national treasure when they see it. <laughs> National treasure is not a nickname. It's a designation, an official national designation. And we're the only one in the whole nation. Welcome to HBCU Week. From the campus of Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland, I am your cultural analyst and correspondent, Brian Bimo Brown. This special presentation lays out all of what you can expect to see for HBCU Week on Maryland Public Television. The daily lineups for this year are scintillating, folks. We'll get to more of that shortly. In the meantime, let's travel to Morgan State, y'all. We got the president of Morgan State guiding freshmen to the classes. Look at that fist bump. Riveting conversations and even a sneak peek into the Bear Cave with the Student Center. Let's get to it. For centuries, historically black colleges and universities have been building a legacy of equitable and attainable education for its students. An education that doesn't stop at the archways of a classroom or even at the confirmation of a degree. See, the HBCU experience is so much more rich than just the college experience. Today, we're on the campus of Morgan State University in Baltimore, Maryland. We're gonna have a special conversation between Tetiana Anderson and the president, Dr. Wilson. I'm also gonna to talk to a couple of students to see if we can investigate what makes the HBCU experience, the Morgan State Bear experience, much more than just academic accolades. I am your cultural correspondent, Brian Bimo Brown. This is HBCU Week. Come with me, y'all. Let's take a trip. I'm here with my man, Tyler. Tyler, how you doing today, man? I'm doing perfect. How about yourself? I'm doing pretty good, Tyler. Tyler, give me your HBCU intro, if you will. Hello, my name is Tyler Mitchell. I'm a political science major, and I am a junior, and I was born and raised in Baltimore City. So, Tyler, I have to ask you a very important question first. Of course. Why did you choose Morgan State? Oh, yes, that's a brilliant question. Yeah. For one, it's close by. I was, um, you know, born and raised at Sinai Hospital. Right. And so that's about like, 20, 30 minutes around. Um, and two, this was my first choice because Morgan is a perfect networking school. A lot of people don't really realize this because they're busy living the college life, and that's not bad. Right. But you have to realize these are going to be your coworkers, these are going to be your networks in the future. Yeah. And so when you talk to people, you have to make sure you are making a connection. Not just a connection for now, but a connection for the future. Absolutely. And so you got to make a good impression. I like that. I like that. I, I'm looking at your shirt right now, and it says, my HBCU prepared me for the real world. I heard your president, Dr. Wilson, say that one of his goals as president is to make sure students have confidence going into the real world. Mm -hmm. How have you experienced that confidence here at Morgan State? Oh, absolutely. There is something the late Elijah Cummings had said, Tell and me. that is to have confidence in your competence. Mm -hmm. And this has taught me that competence really lies in how you approach information. Right. So when you read a book, you have to make sure that you are actually reading it, for one, and that you can find something interesting about it. You know, a lot of students, um, and me included, can struggle at finding something interesting. Okay. And so okay. you have to put yourself in a scenario if you need to, you know, role play. I love D&D, so right. um, <laughs> role play doing something. Role play having a reason to learn something. Right. And it makes it much more easier to enjoy the work and yeah. to find ways to apply it. Right. And so that's my strategy. Okay, okay. Tell me about the diversity at an HBCU. I think when people mm. think HBCUs, is just black. Mm -hmm. All black. Everybody watching Friday, fried chicken on Wednesdays. Tell me about the diversity that happens at a place like Morgan State. Oh, there's plenty of diversity. I know white people, I know Asians, Indians. So make sure you don't fall into colorism because, um, you know, a lot of people can fall into the, the echo chamber of, I only want black people at an HBCU. Mm, okay, okay. And um, this can make it very difficult to have other people want to go to an HBCU. Right. And I've met brilliant people of multiple different shades here. And so we have to make sure not to fall to the kinds of oppression in which have been initiated onto us. I love that. Tyler, I appreciate you. Thank you for coming of course. to Morgan. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with more HBCU. Stay safe, y'all. 
Which one the B sign? Okay, yeah. <laughs> oh, I got, okay, so I gotta get down a little bit. Okay. <laughs> and do the P sign? Like oh, this? Oh, P, okay. Okay. No. Okay. okay. Now this is a peace sign, right? <laughs> right? Okay, you wouldn't trick me. Good morning. Good morning. I'm President Wilson. Welcome. Okay, I want you guys to do absolutely well this mm -hmm. semester, right? Thank you. And you know how we define that here, Morgan? 4.0. All right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. your future nurses. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And we so desperately need more nurses like you. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to see you on campus now mm -hmm. towards the end of the semester. We're going to ask you about that 4.0 because you have a 4.0 rate on average now. Okay. All yeah. oh, you have to do is keep it. Yep. Right? Yeah. Now we're having trouble finding our class. <laughs> right, so how can I help you? <laughs> we're a mall here, right? And then yeah. all across the bridge? I'm actually looking for the okay. behavioral social so science. So. Okay. And but so. um, the girl told me that it's down here past the bridge. Yes. And what time is your class? Nine. Nine. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. So I want you to you know walk you know, maybe a little faster uh, okay. down to the end of the mall, right? Okay. And then go across the Legacy Bridge, the Blue and Orange Bridge. Okay. The first building to your left is the business school. The one to your right is the behavior social science building. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Let's let's make it that fast now. All right. Thank you. You don't want to miss that class. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. Yes, Are you going to class? What time did it start? <laughs> you you can tell from the excitement uh, that you see. Uh, on the faces of the students uh, that things are going well and I'm always energized you know when I see uh, students actually um, you know begin to have their college um, uh, going experience uh, unfold and so so far so good I mean we you know the campus is bustling with students you know we expect over 10,000 students or close to 10,000 students from all 50 states and over 70 countries uh, and as I have stopped students along the way uh, that's what I'm picking up as well students from South Dakota New York California Illinois Louisiana you know, Alabama just all over so the Morgan name has traveled far I'm here with my friend Vanessa Vanessa please do me a favor we were just talking. I need you to give you a full <laughs> intro to the people. My full intro. Yes. So, hi, my name is Vanessa Addison. I am a second year MBA student. Um, I am also a graduate assistant for the MBA program. So, mm -hmm. I run all the social media pages. So, follow us, Grapes Masters. Um, I also am an athletic intern um, for the athletic side. So, I help out with football, basketball, volleyball, softball, all the teams you can name. I've probably written an article, posted on social media for them, helped out. Um, and I previously just finished my last year playing basketball here at Morgan as well. So. Superstar. Superstar. <laughs> Thank you Thank for you. spending some time with yes. me today. I Thank appreciate you. it. <laughs> Let me ask you this. Um, you are a graduate student right now. Yes. And you graduated from Morgan previously. Yes. So i got to ask you the very pivotal question. Why Morgan State? Morgan, the illustrious Morgan State. Yeah. Um, it's just an amazing school. The culture here, the family orientation that we build, um, the opportunities that are at Morgan. Um, I started off as a Morgan State basketball player. Then I moved on to intern with the athletic program while I was still playing. Um, through that, it helped me pivot and be able to work with the Baltimore Ravens, which I'll be working with them this upcoming season. So providing me those opportunities. My advisors are amazing. Um, they just provide you with all the opportunities possible. They also provided me being a Hennessy Fellow um, with the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. So there's just so many opportunities that Morgan has right here that it's a hidden gem and that if you aren't coming here, you should because it's the best program, MBA program in the whole world. So. Hold on, hold on. Hennessy Fellow <laughs> under Third Good Marshall's program? Yes. That yes. has to be the blackest thing I've heard. That's gotta be the
HBCU week, y'all. I'm with my friend Emmanuel. Emmanuel, tell the people about yourself, please. Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Emmanuel Durajaye. I'm a junior here at Morgan State University, currently studying industrial systems engineering. I'm also a sports photographer and videographer. I'm one of the co-founders of the MSU Creatives here at Morgan State University. So you found a student organization here? I would say so, yeah. I was how did you do that? Well, how did, tell me about that process. How easy was it? All right, of course. Um, so I started my freshman year um, here. I came here, I wanted to study engineering. Okay. So I had, on campus, I was, um, market, I was, um, I was walking through the, the gym, the field house, and um, they were marketing to the students, um, trying to recruit people to join the sports marketing team. Okay. And I showed an interest in the photography, videography. And I was like, hey, I want to take photos and videos. And they're like, yeah, we need people. But mind you, I had no experience whatsoever. So like, I was just going in blind for real. Right. So um, I ended up going, applying, and I joined the team. And at that time, my boss, his name was Randy. And he was doing everything by himself. So when I had joined, I was like, hey, I want to join the team. I was like, can you teach me? And he was like, I got you. Handed me his oh. old camera. And I was like, OK, bet. Um, how, what do I do? He's like, just go shoot. And I was like, all right, I got you. So just from, like that? Just like that. So, OK, OK. I feel like situations like that are very specific to HBCUs. I, I would I've only so. been to HBCUs, so right, I know. Right, right, right. So tell me, tell me how, did, how do you feel like Morgan kind of fostered your confidence in that moment? Yeah, Morgan definitely fostered my confidence in that area because, like, it takes you from, like, being in a place where, like, you don't know something, right. and it gives you an opportunity to learn and grow without any, like, requirements. Yeah. You know, like, I could have been uh, someone who like knew what I was doing, but I didn't know what I was doing. But at the same time, they still gave me the opportunity regardless. I think there's beauty in that. You know, like they see that the passion and the eagerness that you have to try something new yeah. with no experience. And there's, there's beauty in that for real. Wow. Yes, sir. Uh, let me ask you this. Gotcha. So this is your junior? You said it's your junior? My junior year, my third year. It's your yeah, third yeah. year here. That was my favorite year in school, too. <laughs> it was yeah. like right before senior year where it was too much pressure. Right. But you were smarter than a sophomore. Definitely Perfect smarter time. than a sophomore. Perfect time, man. <laughs> Right. So tell me about this. Tell gotcha. me about the legacy that you want to leave behind. Have you started thinking about mm -hmm. what you want to leave here at Morgan as you on your way out, as you get ready to graduate? That's a deep question. Yeah. I will tell you that. Um, I'll be honest. When I first came to school, I just want to get my degree, get in and get out. You know, yeah. I mean, just like anybody else would. Like, that's the that's what we're told to do. But I feel like, like I said before, being able to say I helped found the creatives team here at Morgan State University, I'm, I truly believe like that's something that will stick and be planted here. You know, I can say like, oh, I helped build this. You know, like, I helped foster this team of individuals. Not to say it was just me alone. I had people who helped me, my, my boss, Randy, my roommate, Sebastian, Clea, my good man, Justin. Like, he, right. he's been holding us down for a real Shout long time. People, absolutely. Most definitely. Yeah. We definitely have something. We're going to build something for real. That's beautiful, man. Thank you. Emmanuel, thank, thank you for your time, man. I appreciate you. And we'll be right back with more HBCU Week. Yo, they got a sports, they got an e-sports team. You can go to an HBCU and play video games for a living. Your mama lied to you. <laughs> your mama lied, baby. <laughs> your mama lied, son. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow, 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 wow. I hope you guys are enjoying this as much as I am. Right now, we're going to have a special conversation with Tetiana Anderson featuring President Wilson. We'll be right back with more HBCU Week. HBCU Week, I'm Tatiana Anderson at Morgan State University with President David Wilson. Dr. Wilson, thank you for being here. Tatiana, thank you very much for having me. So it's day one for freshmen. What's the energy like on campus? Uh, the uh, energy is just amazing, if you will. Uh, I have just finished uh, serving breakfast on the mall uh, to uh, freshmen and returning students. It's a tradition that we started here at Morgan about six or seven years ago. Uh, and I do it particularly for that purpose, and that is to uh, make sure that I'm in, in uh, conformity with the energy that I see on campus and how the students, you know, sometimes um, freshmen, uh, entering students, uh, are coming with just a bit of uh, trepidation. You know, yeah, they are just not sure, you know, they're making this transition from high school uh, to college, and um, it's good for me to kind of you know, be in a position where I can receive that uh, and I can understand uh, some of the hesitancy uh, that they have. And so uh, this morning, I was just amazed, you know, to see the thousands of students traverse the campus and the energy was off the chart. 
You, you mentioned the word tradition, and I'm wondering how important the tradition and the legacy of the whole HBCU system really is to the whole nation, not just here in Maryland and at Morgan State. Uh, HBCUs um, have a strong legacy uh, of rites, uh, R-I-T-E-S, rituals and ceremonies. Um, and those rites, rituals and ceremonies are laced to the historical uh, path and significance of the institutions. Uh, and so we here at Morgan, you know, we certainly uh, appreciate that. Um, we put in front of our students, our university community on an ongoing basis, uh, many of, of those kinds of events uh, that actually is going to uphold uh, the great history of the institution, is going to tell the story of the founding of the institution, is going to always kind of put before students what we think they really need to know, that this institution just didn't all of a sudden appear yesterday, uh, and HBCUs across the country didn't just appear yesterday. I mean, this genre of institutions, um, many of them are well over 150 years old, uh, and we have a compelling story to tell. Uh, and it's very important that we tell that story in as many different facets as we can. And when it comes to stories, I definitely want to ask about yours. You are from Alabama. <laughs> that is home to Tuskegee University. You were raised during the civil rights era. How did your upbringing inform who you are today and, and what you're doing today? Well, um, you can never really run away from your past. Uh, and certainly in my case, uh, I have taken my past with me uh, as I have climbed on. Uh, and so uh, growing up there in Alabama, uh, of course, you know, there were laws in place that did not require black children to go to school. And so I did not go to school with any degree of regularity until I was in the seventh grade. And of course, you know, that had, you know, un uh, unintended consequences mm -hmm. in that uh, I was not really exposed to formal education uh, on an ongoing basis uh, until seventh grade. Um, and so um, I carry a little bit of what it means to be uh, shut out of a formal educational system with me. Um, also, um, I um, was a young boy uh, when Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated. I was in the sixth grade, uh, and I can recall that day as if it were yesterday, um, because all of a sudden um, the principal got on the uh, bullhorn, if you will, and announced that Dr. King had been assassinated, and everybody in the school just started yelling and screaming and crying. And I began to understand that, you know, wow, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King, I'd heard a lot about him. I'd never had an opportunity, of course, to come close to meeting him. Uh, but I realized at that point that something real precious had been taken from us. Uh, and so uh, then uh, as I went on to uh, undergrad at Tuskegee, uh, I was taught by some uh, of the most amazing professors uh, in the country um, and basically came away there understanding all too well uh, African history, African-American history. Um, I began to understand um, what I had to grown up um, living uh, in Alabama, but I was understanding it now on a highly intellectual foundation. I mean, the students here at Morgan uh, in the late 50s, uh, early 60s, uh, they too uh, were living their version of hell. Uh, they could not go across the street and shop in the shopping centers over there. Uh, and they went over there and they sat in and they sat in and they sat in. And they refused to leave uh, until those shops actually served them. Over 400 of them went to jail. Um, and so, uh, those students on HBCU campuses, be it Morgan or Tuskegee or you name it, uh, they, uh, in the vernacular, they understood what time of day it was. And they understood their role in making sure uh, that they were speaking to the moment. Uh, and having grown up in Alabama, I kind of experienced the same thing on the Tuskegee campus where we were there with a purpose. Yes, you know, you're going to make sure you get a solid education. Uh, but in the process of doing that, uh, you're gonna understand what it means to be committed to a cause. Uh, and when you go out there, you have to continue to fight for that cause. And so as President of Morgan, I fight for the cause. Um, and that cause is 10 billion times greater than little David Wilson. It is a cause 
uh, that is still rooted in injustice, is still rooted in inequality. Um, and that is really what drives me because I understand all too well what it means when those things are shut off from you. Uh, and uh, what really, really drives me here at Morgan is the fact that I don't want any of those things shut off from my students the way they were shut off from David Wilson. And that is a part of how I lead and it will forever be a part of how I lead. Thank you, Tatiana Anderson and President Wilson for part one of this great in-depth interview. We'll be returning shortly. I'm here with Camille with a K. Camille, welcome to the show. Hi. Hi. Can you tell the people about yourself a little bit? Yes. So my name is Camille Trice, and I go to Morgan State, and I am a senior majoring in psychology. I'm a part of the Magnificent Marching Machine here at Morgan State as a Foxy dancer. I'm also part of Pre-Alumni Council, President's Leadership Circle, and I serve as Miss Black and Gold for the 2023-2024 academic school year. I love that. I love that. Okay, you got to explain something to me. What is, you said pre-alumni? Yes. What's the pre-alumni association? So pre-alumni association, that is before we graduate and become alumni, you know, the people that come back and pay for all the different buildings here at Morgan State University. Mm -hmm. So we basically will have like the alumni come and we host events for them and we also just connect students with already people that haven't went to Morgan. So, so as a former band, we gotta talk about the band for a oh, second. Yes. So tell me about your band experience and how like, special groups on campus can kind of help you grow and see a different part of the HBCU experience? So band, I, I have a lot to say about that. Go so ahead, go ahead. I love the marching band. I have been a part of it my entire time at Morgan State. My sister was a part of the marching band. So I've been watching them for like about eight years now. And it's just, it's a once in a lifetime experience. I'm sure you know, with the band, you travel so many different places. The music that they play is like, especially at an HBCU especially here. It's like, it's a completely different experience and it has definitely like enhanced my experience here at Morgan because I've had some of my most funnest memories with the band. And I'm a dancer, so, you know, I like to you know, do, do a couple moves. I have one more question for you. Okay. So I look around, all the names on the building, they're all noticeable names, they have great phenomenal stories. And that just, when I see those things, it challenges me to think about my legacy at this school. What, is your, what do you hope your legacy will be at Morgan State? What are you leaving behind? When I leave Morgan State University, I wanna make sure that I, you know, people can remember like, okay, like I could be anything right. because if you know, from where I started from coming into Morgan State, I wasn't the best student, but I'm definitely coming out a different student and it's possible for anyone here, so. Well, thank you Camille for your time. We appreciate you and we'll be right back with more HBCU Week. Welcome to HBCU Week. I'm here with my friend Tamara. <laughs> Tamara, please introduce yourself to the people. Hi, my name is Tamara Tremuel. I am a junior strategic communication major from Chicago. I serve as the junior class president of the Student Government Association, and I am a member of the Alpha Gamma chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated. So nice to meet you. You too. So nice. I love your person. <laughs> Thank you. So I love, I love coming on to HBCU campuses mm -hmm. and talking to mm -hmm. uh, D9 members, because I want to yes. know from your perspective, mm -hmm. what is the importance of building community while on campus and that yes. sense of leadership that you feel? Honestly, just knowing the history of my organization, it just makes you want to follow in their footsteps. Like yeah. the foundation that they laid, who wouldn't want to come and serve on their campus and be a leader for other young ladies to follow and inspire them to live unapologetically in their truth and serve. Yeah. Um, and so that's really what I feel like D9 organizations bring to HBCU campuses. It inspires us to go past our limit. It, it, it allows us to grow as individuals mm -hmm. and as leaders in our community, so yeah. yeah. I was listening to President Dr. Wilson mm -hmm, talk earlier. Mm -hmm. And he said that one of the important parts of his presidency is to make sure that students have confidence mm, after they graduate from yes, Morgan. Tell yes. me about how you feel confident here and what Morgan is doing to kind of buffer that confidence. Honestly, it's just Morgan pushes you out of your comfort zone, mm. whether you realize it or not. The same, the way you come in as a freshman, you're not going to leave as a senior, whether that's somebody saying, hey, I think you should do this, whether that's a friend, a mentor, a professor, they're constantly pushing you outside of your comfort zone. So you have that confidence because right. when you graduate, you have that confidence on your resume. It looks good. You know, your LinkedIn profile is set because you didn't have a whole bunch of professional sessions with that. Absolutely. You know, you have the presence and the aura to walk in the room and command the attention of whatever job that you're seeking. So Morgan really just pushes you outside of your comfort zone so you have that confidence and you don't wait till after you graduate to be pushed. Right, right, mm -hmm. of course. 
So I got to ask you one more question. Okay. So um, I've been walking around. I've been hearing people talk about how the past of Morgan and mm -hmm. the history of Morgan, mm -hmm. but it seems like you are the future of Morgan. Yes. So I want to know from your perspective, mm -hmm. what is the legacy you want to leave behind? Mm, that's a good one. I honestly want people to think of me and say, wow, if she can do it, I can too. Mm -hmm. I want to inspire and influence people to walk unapologetically in their truth and really use their gifts and talents to change the world, change the campus. Don't be afraid. People are always going to talk whether it's good or bad. So just do it. Yeah. Don't make any excuses. Um, and just let your influence and your your inspiration and who you are infect the people around you, infect your campus. So when you come back years later, people still are talking about, hey, that's what such and such did. I want to be like her. I want to build upon what she did. That's lovely. I got to ask you one more because okay. you got great energy. You okay. got great energy. <laughs> Tyler donated $20 million, which yes. is the largest student yes. donation to a school. Mm -hmm. What about Morgan? It's like, okay, when I leave here, I'm not mad. I want to give back. Mm -hmm. What about Morgan gives you that sense of that spirit, I mean, that twenty just, million dollar spirit, if you will? Honestly, you could just see, like when you walk the campus, you could just see why you would want to give back. Like we're continuously expanding, and we can't do that without the funds. Um, but it also just gives access to it gives access it gives students access to more resources, like Northwood. Um, that's something that wasn't even for us. We couldn't even have access to it. So why wouldn't you want to come back and donate to a school that's continuously expanding and giving us resources so that we can go and be the leaders and, and change the world? Samara, <laughs> thank you for your time. I thank you. you. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with more HBCU Week. Now let's tune back into Tatiana Anderson and President Wilson for the conclusion of their riveting conversation on all things Morgan and the state of HBCUs. Welcome back. I'm here at Morgan State University with President David Wilson. Your tenure here at Morgan has been coined the Morgan Modern Era. Speak to me a little bit um, about what that mission means to you and how you're fulfilling it. Well, um, you know, Morgan, of course, um, when you look at our 156, uh, 57 year history, it is an institution that has defined itself uh, based on eras um, and primarily through the tenures uh, of its presidents. Uh, and so, uh, I am in my 14th year here. Uh, my uh, predecessor was here for uh, 25 uh, plus years. And during his time, uh, Morgan uh, was, uh, was, was rebirthed. I think that era was known as uh, the Morgan Renaissance uh, because you know, the institution needed a lot of care and it needed a lot of vision. Uh, and so when I came on board, um, I inherited an institution uh, that had undergone a renaissance. Uh, however, um, what I did was I stepped back and I said, okay, we appreciate that, but we can't, can't live in the past. And so how do we create a shared vision of transformation? And what does transformation, what does that look like? Uh, and so the last 14 years uh, or so uh, have been about um, a transformation of Morgan. And that transformation is defined in so many ways, but first of all, a physical transformation. Uh, and so um, we have now eclipsed uh, 1 billion, approaching 1 billion, 100 million dollars in either uh, commitments that have been made to build new facilities on the campus uh, and or to renovate existing ones. Uh, that transformation uh, manifests itself um, in new academic degree programs. Uh, that transformation has manifested itself um, in um, the student enrollment on campus. Um, we have gone from 7,000 or so students uh, when I arrived now to approaching 10,000 students uh, from 50 states uh, and 70 some countries. Uh, and then of course in the high quality faculty that we have, um, nearly 700 faculty here, um, very diverse uh, on the cutting edge of scholarship uh, in so many ways. Uh, and so um, this uh, transformation has really been about uh, taking a note of where the institution was and then how to grow it in a way where it would be one of the most consequential, if not the most consequential university in Maryland and one of the most consequential universities in the United States. So you, you talked about several things. I'm going to double back to some of them. But one of them is the transformation um, that's happened on campus. I mean, if you walk around Morgan State, you see all these beautiful new buildings, structures, um, greens. And you have stated that you really believe in what you call the transparency of process. So I'm wondering, you know, you've done so much already, but what more is to come? What's in your head? <laughs> what have you got planned? 
Uh, well, uh, actually, this is just the beginning. <laughs> uh, and, and so we want to, of course, continue that transformation uh, in many of the same ways. Um, we want to make sure you know, that we have a new engineering building here on campus. Uh, Morgan is number one in the state of Maryland in producing uh, black engineers. Uh, we're number one in civil, number one in electrical, number one uh, in industrial. Um, and um, we uh, are marching toward um, making the case for perhaps uh, a new engineering complex on campus because we think we can double the production of engineers. Uh, likewise, um, a new science complex uh, on campus as well because we are uh, one of the leading institutions in Maryland uh, in the production of blacks in science uh, and our facilities are not where they should be. Um, we also want to continue to elevate our research mission here at Morgan. And so we have gone from a moderate research university, which uh, Carnegie classifies as a R3, moderate research, uh, to a high research institution, R2. And we thought we would achieve high research by 2021, uh, but we actually achieved that three years earlier in 2018. And so now uh, we are on a path uh, to achieve R1 status, which is very high research. Now, um, for those who uh, are listening, uh, who might not have an understanding of R3, R2, or R1, uh, R1 really means that that's the place where your most um, hmm, uh, elite research institutions rest. It's about 140 plus institutions there. The Ivy League, Big Ten, University of Chicago, but there's no HBCU, R1. And our desire is to be one of the first to get there. I am a product of an HBCU myself. I went to Fisk University. And you talked about the confidence that mm -hmm. going to an HBCU instills into its students. For somebody who might not understand, describe what that means. What do students get when they go to an institution that is sort of of them, by them, and for them that they can't get at a predominantly white institution? You know, I've been thinking about this um, a little bit differently uh, for several years. And um, while I went to Tuskegee undergrad, uh, this is the first time that I have had uh, such uh, an elongated experience um, on an HBCU campus. And as such, as I walked the campus of Morgan and I walked the campuses of some of the other HBCUs, here's what I come away with. Um, every single day on that campus, as students actually traverse those campuses, uh, they really are in a museum. They are in a museum. I mean, the campus itself is a museum. I'm not talking about a museum as a building on the campus. I mean, the entire campus is. Uh, and it is rooted so richly in history uh, that speaks to them every single day, right? Um, there's a story behind the name on the building, on every single building here. Uh, and when the students actually become intrigued by that and they commence to research that, that in and of itself builds confidence. It builds a sense of belonging, right? Uh, and so when you put that together, just being in an environment where you have incidental learning taking place every single day with the formal education that they're getting, that really uh, instills uh, unparalleled confidence in students. And so um, when students uh, leave Morgan um, and they go on to grad school, um, they go into the world of work, uh, it's very important you know, for them to stand there toe to toe with anyone uh, and not be challenged by um, the fact that someone else may not have been exposed a certain way. Um, and our students won't own that. They will not own lack of exposure uh, on the part of others because they are fully, fully confident in themselves. And that's what you get here at Morgan. That's what you get on an HBCU campus. And I would say, because most of my career, other than Morgan, has been spent um, in uh, very large, you know, research-based traditionally white institutions, that that's one of the major differences that I see uh, between HBCUs and uh, what I call TWIs. President Wilson, thank you so much for this conversation. And uh, Tatiana, thank you very much for inviting me into this dialogue.
And thanks to you as well for watching HBCU Week. I hope you learned something. I thank you for watching HBCU Week. I'm your culture correspondent, Brian Bimo Brown. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. We were talking to the president, Dr. Wilson, earlier today, okay. and he said that one of his main goals is to make sure that students have confidence so they can go into the world and be great people. How has Morgan helped foster your confidence? It's the fact that, you know, wherever I go, right, I wear Morgan State University on my sleeve, yeah. right? Uh, last week, I went to DC, right, you know? Uh, uh, it was this, it was this cool brother, you know, like selling oils, yeah. right? So he was trying to put me like in this box, right? Yeah. He was like, well, you know, the problem with y'all is, you know, you, you know, I, I, I bet you've never even had, you know, like a class about us. I said, wait a minute, sir. I apologize. You don't know me, so let me shake your hand. Let me look you in your eyes. My name is Justice George. All right. I attend the illustrious Morgan State University, the only national chapter. <laughs> all right. In my sophomore year, I've had an African diaspora class, so you've never met me. So now. Now I had to introduce myself so, you know, like we can kind of perform a relationship. That's right. Right? Everybody on this campus is different. That's right. Everybody on this campus is for a common goal. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power.